I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually prefer the original. Hey guys, it's me again. I haven't been on in a while. This is my review for Independence Day Re Reinsurgence? I don't know, Independence Day 2, Unnecessary Sequel. Anyways, so this film takes place 20 years later after the original film. Uh, minus one Will Smith, minus Jeff Goldblum's wife, kind of almost minus that general guy, minus that asshole who was in uh, politics. Uh, so basically the world has advanced itself, but Jeff Goldblum's always like, oh, we're gonna fight. Actually, Jeff Goldblum, I don't even know what he's doing in this movie. At the very beginning of the film, he's going to this area in Africa and he's seeing this circle symbol, which is interesting because apparently there was a lot of other people who saw this circle symbol. And it's this circle that is a kind of this reoccurring theme to the film. It has a, a meaning to it. And really the funny thing is this is the biggest thing I have to say about this film. There's two issues. There's two major issues with it. One is despite the fact that I think it has a very similar runtime, it feels really, really rushed. Really rushed. And the second, every, aside from two jokes, every single joke in the film, I swear it could have a wah, wah, wah track attached to it. The humor is awful. And what's so crazy about it is that five people wrote the script and it's so like the movie moves so fast that you don't really get to know any of the characters or you get to care like that's something that we've always had with Ronald Emmerich films is we've never really had that much character if they've been a character they've been a stereotype character but at least to say they've been a character at all for the original Independence Day. Will Smith. Will Smith was great. Jeff Goldblum was a nerd. His, uh, the general guy. The, the president was a guy who, well, he didn't really have much character either. Bull Pullman didn't really have much emotion. Bad example. How about uh, Day After Tomorrow? Dennis Quaid, Jake Gyllenhaal. Those were characters, right? And what's funny too is that this film doesn't even have as not much destruction as the original Independence Day because all the destruction actually happens literally at one moment. That's it. There's one part where this big spaceship comes down, the gravity goes blah 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 blah, blah everything gets all fucked up, and that's it. The threat of this film is so much smaller, despite the fact that the ship is as big as the entirety of the United States. And that's something that I felt was very boring throughout the whole movie is I felt no tension I felt no real I don't know any sort of urgency to this film I didn't feel a danger for the characters and that's something too is that's probably one thing that made the first Independence Day so watchable is the kind of the tension the effects the characters are so stupid but the lines like you know the dialogues funny but like bad funny and Will Smith was in it. This film has no Will Smith. His son, you know, the kid does okay, but he's no Will Smith, obviously. Liam Hemsworth, uh, he has one joke that actually was kind of funny. That was okay. But there's this, there's so many characters that are totally pointless. There's a guy who looks like John Oliver, who's the most annoying sap on the planet. There's a guy who you totally think is Harry Connick Jr. who's going to die, but he doesn't. And... That was what was actually funny is for a film that has at least a billion deaths happen, at least a billion deaths happen in one moment, it's kind of really passed off. And that's something that this film suffers from most of all is that you just, you're sitting there, you just don't care. I was going into this movie expecting something as awfully watchable as the original film was. The original film is stupid, cheesy, terrible, but it's very watchable. Uh, this one's not. This one's very forgettable, there's almost no point to it, the effects take over the film, but in the end, the f so much of the film is probably done on green screen. Jeff Goldblum wasn't funny, his father, oh my god, he was only in it for five minutes, but Jesus, that was five minutes too long. And it's really, like, there's a very important person who gets killed off, and it's just passed off as nothing, and they don't even bring it up again. And they don't even confirm the, the death. They just literally just whoop, out of the film. So, Independence Day 2 is a very pointless movie. It is. It's, it does have a little bit of a build-up for a sequel, which is stupid. I don't know. Like This is... 
It's funny, but Ronald Emmerich is Adam Sandler himself. Sure, Ronald Emmerich has never been known for good movies, but at least he's had a character to them. At least they've had a sort of a resemblance of entertainment. But I've noticed that with his last few movies, especially 2012 and now this movie, he just, you know, he's never good at making these movies anymore. I don't know. I think it, when you made Destruction difficult to do in the 90s and in the early 2000s, when you actually had to not only just work with computers, but you still had to work with models and everything, that really put a lot of effort into it. Now with that, they're just like, yeah, we'll have the computer people do it. I don't know, I just feel that the effort was gone. Anyways, my rating for Independence Day 2 is a 2 out of 7, ironic. And yeah, no, I, I was really looking forward to watching something cool out here in 100 Mile and it wasn't really that good. Anyway guys, that's all from me. I will be putting up my other reviews very soon. I'll talk to you guys later.